Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to The Fallacious Truth. Uh, this is going to be about hurdle number five in our How to Prepare Yourself for a Divorce series. Let's do a quick recap of the previous episodes over the past few days here. We went right into hurdle number one, which is self-preservation. We need to make sure that we, as men, can take a step back and look at the battlefield before us. We need to do this to better understand, plan, and strategize just how we're going to move forward in a divorce. Our next hurdle was none other than our soon-to-be ex herself. We went over just what we need to watch out for and how we need to secure ourselves and our children if we have them. We also went over how to document, log, and protect ourselves and our children as much as possible both inside the home and outside the home. The third hurdle ended up being a two-parter here, part A and part B. The third hurdle that we need to prepare ourselves for as much as we humanly possibly can is the financial drain on us that divorces, both during and after divorce, quite frankly. We discuss liquid assets and different sources of income that we're going to need. Now, we're on to hurdle number four here. Um, it's, it's actually going to touch on our mental status. Now, before you skip this video, and I know a lot of you thought of that immediately as soon as you heard this, as you really don't see it as a tangible thing. Believe me, I used to think the same way, but I'm here to tell you that this whole mental status thing, it's more important than you might think, especially when it comes to divorce. And quite honestly, it's really, overall, it's really the glue that sets the foundation to help cross off all of the other hurdles that you're going to face. Now, I think we think of mental status as if it's something of, uh, somewhat of a taboo in society. And you, as men are weak, if you want to take that into consideration when looking at optimum health or in this case, during a divorce. I think we need to get past that stage. It doesn't make you weak or of less testosterone when you want to consider your mental health, at least, you know, at least when you use it constructively. Now, I'm not talking about this guy here just as an example. I'm sorry that I'm not a person anymore. I'm a problem. And it's all my fault. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not talking about with someone like in this example here where they're, they're looking for a safe space to crawl into because they can't handle stepping outside in, into the real world and having someone yell at them. I mean, this is ridiculous. I'm not at all talking about this. I'm specifically talking about how you handle yourself and how you carry yourself during this divorce. I'm talking about how you treat yourself and those around you. I'm talking about how you remain focused and driven. I'm talking about how you plan and strategize and accomplish your given task at hand. Your mental status or mental health plays a huge role in this. If you get distracted, you're easily offended. If you don't find some kind of center, something to firmly plant your feet on the ground with, you know, to, to literally ground you, you know, unless you're Superman, you're going to lose it. You have to make sure that you're firmly planted into the ground with something, I mean anything, that will keep you centered. As soon as divorce is brought up by your soon-to-be ex, unless you've been preparing for this, the surge of emotion can overwhelm you. I mean, the pins and needles that you're going to start feeling when you've discovered that she's been cheating on you this entire time, you know, by a chad that she's had in her back pocket and simply held on to and, until she secured him as another bank and another individual for validation. You know, it can be overwhelming and enraging, especially when you are doing your normal daily grind providing for your wife, your your kids, you know, if you have them, and then yourself last. It's important that you remember that this too shall pass. And more importantly, you need to switch over into battle mode. You need to switch over into total war mode for this divorce. You have to keep yourself focused on the task at hand that's, that's now before you. You need to survey your surroundings. You will need to assess the ability to preserve yourself first. Because remember, if you don't secure yourself first, your children, if you have any, they can and will potentially suffer with less time with you. Once you've made that assessment, you need to write down the areas that you feel need improvement. Don't allow yourself to stray. As much as you want to go out and explore the bottom of the bottle, don't. You don't want alcohol replacing the oxygen in your blood. You need to think clearly. Your time is now more precious than ever before. You are up against the clock your ex has now laid down before you. Remember, you are to never leave the home if she tells you to, unless, of course, there's a court order. You never leave that marital residence as it can and will be used against you. 
Maintain your focus. Look around your residence. Take notes on everything. Take pictures of your assets. Document and catalog everything. Maintain your focus. This is not the time to go looking for a Tinder date. Now is not the time to rekindle an old flame. There will be plenty of time for that later on once your divorce is all settled. You need to maintain your focus. You cannot be led astray. You can't allow her to see her weaknesses. You can't allow her to see what may or may not make you tick. And you certainly can't allow her to see your strengths as she may learn to find a counter to them to bring them down a notch. As I've said several times thus far, you must remain stoic. You must keep your focus. Make sure your assets are separated in the bank and anywhere else that you can think of. One of the biggest mistakes we as men make is we attempt to fix the situation. We attempt to find a logical solution. This can and will lead you to compromises, and you must never compromise. This is something that she's going to try to aim for, especially if she views you as a pushover. She's going to know your buttons. She's going to know how to push them to get what she wants, depending on how much time you spent together. She will be the wonderful, sweet, innocent woman one day, and when she realizes her manipulations aren't going to achieve her end game, her end goal, she will have no problem flipping that bitch switch to the on position. Remember, fellas, remain stoic and show no emotion. She will eventually get tired of her game, call up her new Chad or some girlfriends, and start complaining to them. Use this to your advantage. Write down everything. Write how she tries to manipulate you. Write down how she complains to them. Write down every lie, especially if you can prove it's a lie. This will all go to her credibility, to which you already know isn't worth a damn thing. Under no circumstances are you to get too close to her. Remember, maintain your distance. It will take nothing whatsoever for her to file a false police report and have you hauled away. Every interaction with her, if she is saying something, you remain silent and you have that recorder running. You need to prepare yourself for head games. You need to prepare for her trying to get under your skin. You need to prepare for her trying to manipulate the truth with just enough lie to make it palatable to those around her to paint you as the bad guy. Remember, fellas, remain stoic and do not fall for it. Depending on how much voltage is going to that bitch switch, she can dim it and back it down, or she could ramp up the voltage and start rumors, tell lies. She will paint you as abusive to her and your children. Yes, fellas, she will use your children guaranteed as a weapon against you if you have them. That's why I can't stress to you enough to document everything and to always, always, always have that recorder going. It will literally make or break you. It will mean the difference between you having proof that you didn't mistreat her or your children and you getting hauled away in handcuffs for something you did not do. When it comes to believing you over her, you will never be believed without evidence and a lot of it. That's simply the way it is. Even if you aren't an emotional person, if you are someone who doesn't feel much being accused of something you didn't do especially to your children, the only way I can think to describe it is an initial sensation of situational fear, followed by an intense rage and anger, followed by the loss of feeling in the tips of your fingers, to eventually pins and needles when you, when you start to get that feeling back again. When this happens, after she's lied about you to the police, Brother, the only thing I can suggest is that you walk away. Every fiber in your being is going to tell you to lash out in rage. Don't act on those justified, righteous impulses of rage and anger that you feel. Walk away. You have to. Otherwise, you'll be seen as the aggressor no matter what. Unfortunately, that's the world we live in today. If you have kids, spending time with them is a great way to help keep you centered and focused. When you have kids, that is becomes your number one focus, your number one priority, your number one goal in a divorce. And I'll go into that in great detail on another video with regards to children and what you should and shouldn't do to achieve the best outcome. If you don't have kids to focus on, put your energy into the task at hand of planning, strategizing, and protecting yourself. You also need a way to have some sort of a pressure valve. One of the best pressure valves us as men have is we can go to work out. It's a fantastic way to maintain your focus, relieve some stress, because believe me, the stress will become immense. Learning to channel it effectively will benefit you immeasurably. Bottom line, because you only have one chance to get this right, one chance to prepare, and one chance to make sure you have a positive outcome, you need to make sure you are of as sound mind as possible. 
you need to remain focused, driven, and realizing that your upcoming task can and will most likely define you for the rest of your life. The choice is yours as to if you want to make the outcome as positive as possible or leave everything to chance. I guarantee you, your soon-to-be ex would rather you choose the latter option. And that option is not the better option for you either. The last thing I'll mention here with regards to your mental status is to make sure you get enough sleep. You do not want to lose your stoic composure. You, you do not want to accidentally lash out at something that you normally wouldn't have because you are fatigued. With that being said, you also don't want anything that you've said or done to be taken out of context or misconstrued. Always remember, it doesn't take much at all for her to call and file a false police report. And then you are truly in trouble unless you have a surefire way of proving your innocence. And we've covered that time and time again by now. What you can do to mitigate the possibility of that happening. And I'll leave a link here to Hurdle 2 that we covered in the second video. The how to deal with your soon to be ex video. So bottom line is this fellas. Make sure you take into consideration your mental status always. Make sure that you are focused. Make sure that you are stoic in your composure. Make sure that you remain driven to your end goal. You need the outcome of this divorce as positive and in your favor as possible. Because the rest of your life can and will depend on it. Thank you for joining me today to listen to this video. There are several other key points and several other key topics that we need to cover with regards to divorce. Children being a, a huge one of them, and I really want to talk about that in depth. It may take a few episodes just for that topic alone, so stay tuned here in the next upcoming days. I'm going to have more coming out. Anyhow, thank you. Take care. Uh, I'd really appreciate it if you liked, share, and subscribe. Again, thank you and take care. Bye-bye.